content warning. Flashing lights and images, sudden or fast changing colors, fast moving images and patterns. The Atari 2600 is said to be an interesting site for video game design. 2600 games are rarely looked at today other than oddities, a financial and design dead end to be overwritten by Nintendo and microcomputers. Their disconnect with today comes mainly from their games being made with a lack of knowledge on how to make a console game. With very little to look to for help in creating experiences suited to a console, many developers either had to essentially start from scratch to design games, or take inspiration from the closest medium, the arcade game. Turmoil took this route. Released sometime in November of 1982, Turmoil was developed by Sirius Software and published by 20th Century Fox, though the actual programmer of the game was Mark Turmel. Turmoil is one of his earlier works, where he is more known for his work on games like Smash TV, NBA Jam, and later games at Zynga. In an interview about a month before Turmoil's release, Mark Turmel makes the link to coin-op games explicit. While saying this, he mentions how Turmoil may become the first home console game to be ported to arcade rather than the other way around. This never happened, Turmoil would only get ports to some computers at the time, but it brings up interesting questions. How does Turmoil translate the arcade experience to an early home console? What changes in the transition? And what is made clear? Turmoil takes place on a single screen with seven lanes and your ship in the center. Aliens move from both sides of the screen, and you must shoot them while not letting them touch you. Get hit and that's a life gone, but they go down in one hit as well. None of the aliens shoot, their only attack being movement. There's five enemy ships of varying speeds, an arrow that if it gets across the screen will turn into a tank, which can only be shot from behind. There's also prizes that appear at the ends of lanes randomly that allow you to enter the lane to reach them. If you take too long, they turn into very fast bullets you must shoot down. If you get the prize in time, you have to rush back to the center, as a cannonball approaches from the opposite side of the lane, which you can't shoot, so you must get back to the center and move into another lane. The game is divided into nine different stages, where the only thing that changes is the speed of the ships, and sometimes the division between the lanes are made invisible. Once you clear out a wave, you move on to the next stage with an extra life. There's also a level select option at the start of the game. While explaining in words makes it sound a little complicated, there's a surprising amount to help acquaint the player, starting with its framing. The framing of Alien seems almost like a formality. You need to wrap these mechanics into something no matter how flimsy, and Aliens was the go-to format of the time, so that's what it was. You usually shoot and avoid aliens when you play as a ship in other games, thus it uses the already common language of arcade games to match the player's expectations. This is complicated in the level of abstraction the game has. The Atari 2600 had extremely limited graphic capabilities, so most of its games relied on abstract graphics to evoke the idea of what the game is, rather than go for literal representation. What Turmoil does instead is essentially eliminate any pretense at presenting a cohesive setting, or even representation at all. These ships, arrows, cannonballs, and tanks aren't to imagine a setting much bigger than its cartridge can hold, or even represent their real-life counterparts, but to allow quick discernment during gameplay. Its visual presentation is primarily functional rather than imaginative. This is exemplified in its cover art and advertisements, focusing on the game experience itself as the only necessary context. All across the United States, kids are coming face to face. There's no faster game in town. There's no faster game in town. There's all sorts of things coming after you. Bowling ball first. You're welcome. Give it up. Bullets on out. They keep coming at you on the screen. It's good enough to make you... It's turmoil. turmoil for your Atari VCS, one of the new games of the century from 20th Century Fox. Turmel even recognized this, mentioning that players rarely read the manual, and thus the game was designed with no more context than the game itself provides. What results is movement of shapes on a flat plane with no concern for representation outside of what it communicates experientially. Once one begins to play, the actual process begins and these thoughts fade into the background. 
My first time was getting used to the basic mechanics. I was tapping the shoe button constantly while maneuvering between lanes. Each ship was a new variable to take into account. I lost most of my lives on the first stage, but I somehow made it to the next one, and the next, where my first game ended. During this attempt, everything feels off. Shifting between lanes is stiff, and the aliens outpace me at every turn. I tried again. Near the end of the first stage, I made a discovery. You can just hold down the shoot button. Funnily enough, this is in the manual I hadn't read at this point. You can have a shot in almost every lane at once if you hold it down and switch lanes quickly. I began to gain some grace in my movements. With this, I could make it to the fourth stage. The first stage where the graphics for the lanes are taken out. I was utterly lost at this change. That rigidity creeps back in, and I found myself having trouble gauging the lanes I'm in, and more importantly, if the aliens were in the center. I lost most of my lives, but I made it past to the fifth stage, where I quickly lost. I tried again. On my third try, I understood the basic movements, but how to use those movements was a problem. I tried to be cautious and the game does not encourage that. If you stay in one lane too long, the game will eventually launch the cannonball, forcing you to move, and neglecting other lanes could lead to tanks or prize bullets in multiple lanes. Constant and aggressive movement is a must, and thus the player must be interested enough to keep up, which the game creates before we even press our first input. Saying Turmoil's graphics focus on the experience of the image comes into clearer view with how its visual composition is concerned with bringing out a certain emotion, interest. At this point the lanes make more sense. These horizontal lines serve as leading lines, regulating every movement of not just the game's sprites, but the player's side as well. This is why every enemy comes from the edges of the frames, where visual tension is at its highest. The player's sight is guided from the edge along the lane to the player's ship, the most uninteresting section of the image. However, there is not just one lane, but multiple, repeated in linear rhythm to isolate each sprite and divide the player's movement. What results is a player being conditioned to follow where their eye's interest would naturally follow. Since there's a high number of elements in the frame, we get a chaotic image, but composed in a way that allows the player to make sense of it as long as they follow the game's visual cues. Doing so creates interest as the player tracks each of the lanes for sprites as quickly as possible. Even when cut into the single frames that they are, every frame of turmoil creates interest in the viewer without even one button press. As I began to internalize this, the lanes never really disappeared. After this I steadily improved, being able to consistently get past the fourth stage without issue. I could now improvise within a limited set of movements, though there's another wall one I would not be able to surpass. Eventually I just can't keep up. Around stage 6 to 7 is where the speed is just too much for me, and the game regains a sense of turmoil from its name. Aliens zoom across constantly, and all you have to do is just hold that button and move to them as fast as you can. Eventually you can't, and the game ends. Turmoil would probably be classified as a score attack game like the arcade games it takes inspiration from but that name doesn't survive the transition to home consoles. The score will disappear once the game is turned off, which the game tries to circumvent by putting a score page in the manual, but I doubt there are many people who use that. It also encourages aggressive play further by awarding more points to faster aliens, but to be honest, I barely paid attention to it. The social aspect of the score in the arcade isn't there. There's no crowd watching pushing me to do better or the thought that others may see my score. With this absence, the early console arcade experience becomes ephemeral. Nothing lasts outside of that current play session. If there is no record of my play, and I hit a wall in progress, why did I find myself so stuck to turmoil? It wasn't until I stopped playing the game as it was intended that it became clear. While the game encourages aggressive play, it actually offers little resistance early on. The cannonball will come if you stay in the lane for too long, but it takes a while in the first stage and you can easily dodge it and go back to the lane. If you do this, the game slows down as to almost pause. The game is essentially extended as long as the player wants, though it's not desired. It's not just boring, but uncomfortable. There's a compulsion to act, and suppressing that leads to a turmoil in a different sense than doing what the game wants. 
As the game's movements are internalized in the player, and interest is accumulated with each play session, there's an increasing compulsion to manipulate those movements to perform a dance with the game, matching its highs and lows. There's no goal in the form of an ending. What matters is the process of managing movement in space during fluctuating states of tension. This dance is in one way, as it requires a trust in the game, achieved when the player understands their newfound mechanics. The player relies on the game to react, as does the game on them, a shifting balance between aggressive and responsive action. About one and a half minute stages of increasing tension punctuated by five seconds of stillness during each stage transition. Lasting longer in the game is felt less as skilled play in the moment and more as validation in the form of lengthening that sense of dance with the game. Any notion of mastery is ridiculous, as if the player is the dominant actor in this situation, like there isn't a computer regulating play as it cooperates with them in this performance. Due to this power imbalance, it's a dance that is never meant to last. Turmoil offers a few more affordances than its arcade inspirations, with a longer ramp up in speed, an option of starting stage that let the player adjust easier, but it's ultimately a piece of software programmed to eventually move out of sync with the player. It will become antagonistic in its movements, eventually making the dance impossible, and the player can react to their betrayal. They can force the game into their tempo, refusing to respond and instead direct in their stillness. The experience loses any illusion of cooperation and becomes a waiting game, one that can't resolve unless the player chooses to continue. The player realizes the minimal power their movements have, and they can either try to adapt to the game further and repeat the process, or decide the game has reached its limits in dancing along with the player. Even if one chooses to end their time with the game, there's a residue that sticks to you. That time after playing where that compulsion creeps up again, that need to dance within those constraints again, to move in concert with something on demand through improvisation of limited digital inputs. Turmoil is an experience with its only purpose being to be continually engaged with it. Considering its inspirations, it makes sense. The main goal of arcade games with no endings at the time was to create, accumulate, and sustain interest so you would put more quarters in to relive that ephemeral dance just one more time. What is different is you don't put quarters in to play Turmoil. You buy it once, or emulate it for free nowadays, and play as much as you want. There's no economic factor to exploit the player's interests. The player's dance with the game can be reproduced without limit. In this view, Turmoil is a game limited by the context of its release. Turmoil was built to exploit that interest, and its inability to do so by its platform leaves a hole in its design while making it more apparent. The jump to the arcade was its only option at the time to fulfill its purpose, but that need makes Turmoil feel like a cynical submission to its place as a commodity. While the aesthetic pleasures the game offers during play are fun, it ultimately leads to alienation once it's realized to be meaningless through value extraction. It's also worth mentioning that this exploitation of interest appears in more intensified forms today through loot boxes, battle passes, and free-to-play game design. And while that's outside the scope of this video, it's something that should be explored. Turns out happiness can't come solely from consumption. And I feel so hollow from all this because Turmoil can't see anything beyond that. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon or Coffee. Patreon is if you want to support me monthly, and Coffee is for one-time support. These videos wouldn't be possible without the generous support of my patrons and coffees. Any amount helps this channel keep going. Anyways, here's my Twitter, my Instagram, my channel link if you want to subscribe, and some other videos I've made. Well, that's all I had to say. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around.